Hi, I'm Kelly, and this is part one of the Nikon Focusing System series. Let's get into it. Okay, first things first. Number one, the Nikon Z focusing system requires more contrast in the images to focus than DSLRs do. The focusing system is different, it works different, and it takes some getting used to if you're coming from DSLRs. In addition, the Nikon documentation says that Z cameras have focus points and Nikon could use a little lesson in geometry. What you see on the screen is not a point. It's a square. It's a rectangle, right? So um, the Nikon focusing system does not have focus points. What it does have are focus areas of different sizes, right? So just make a note of that. Um, they talk about focus points, and that's not technically accurate. Um, also, you should know that the Nikon focusing system will focus on the closest thing it can find with good contrast inside the focus area. Let's look at a, a, an example. Right, so right now I'm focused on my Z5 there, but you can see because the camera is inside that focus box, it's not focusing on what's behind it, right? So if I move it a little bit, and then it's going to focus on whatever's closest to me, right, inside that box, even if it's just a little bit, just a little bit, there it is. So make a note of that, what happens and what will happen um, when you're trying to figure out what focus mode to use, you may find you need a smaller focus area to avoid some confusion or some some foreground element in your shot that could change the focus on you. So just be aware of that. It's just a note. Um, you probably already knew that, but just making sure that you're aware of it. Next important thing. What you see on the screen and what you see in the viewfinder of your camera is exactly what the sensor sees. So if what you see is dark, the sensor sees dark. If, if the image that you're looking at is dark, the sensor is not going to be able to focus well. The, fo the, the sensor needs light and it needs contrast. So if, if, you're, if it's too dark, your camera's not going to be able to focus, right? And so, um, again, just another thing to note, it's an important aspect. Let's talk about some key focus settings. If you're struggling with focus and getting accurate focus on your camera. These are tips. People will disagree with literally every, most everything I say, but it's at least a good starting point. And if you're well beyond this, then you're probably not watching the video anyway. Um, but these are some tips. And I, actually, these are settings that I kind of use all the time anyway, um, for the most part. So let's jump into a few settings that are important. All right. Number one, let's go into the menu, and we are going to go to autofocus, A1 and A2. Now, depending on the Z camera that you have, these might, like the Z5 the, or the Z50, for example, doesn't have uh, AFS priority selection. But in general, most of the cameras have some variation of these, but they all do exactly the same thing. But so let's take a look at them. AFC A1 on the Z6 II, uh, you have release and focus. So release and focus, what this setting does, uh, if it's set to release, and I think actually the default is release, which is kind of unfortunate in some ways. Um, if you have it set to release, the camera will literally take a picture whether, you're, whether it has focus or not. Whether, whether it has focus lock, it doesn't matter. You press the shutter, the shutter button, and it's going to take a picture. It's leaving it up to you to make sure that focus is, is accurate. Well, in the old days of manual focus, I mean, that, 
you, you always made sure you had focus before you press the shutter button. These days, um, the camera will do some extra work for you, so why not let it? So for me, um, I generally choose focus. And what that means is if I'm in, if I'm in AFC priority or AFC mode and I take a picture or try to take a picture, the camera will make sure that it has focus lock before it takes a picture. Now, I've seen some uh, videos by some real prominent um, YouTubers saying, well, gosh, they hate, hate the idea that, th that they could be waiting on the camera. Y look, you're not going to be waiting on your camera. I mean, a fraction of a second, maybe. Um, for me, I generally, when I take pictures, I, I like them to be in focus. I mean, that's just, that. maybe that's just me. <laughs> but uh, generally, I like them to be in focus. So I choose um, A1, AFC, I choose to, to, to set that to focus. And for um, AFS as well, I choose um, I choose focus. Now with AFS, it's it's kind of I don't know. It doesn't make as much sense. That's why the Z50 doesn't even have this um, setting. In AFS, um, you're probably going to be waiting until you have the green box before you take a picture anyway. But just so you know, you can you can select it on the Z62. I generally set that to focus as well. Again, because generally when I'm taking pictures of things, I like, I like them to be in focus. Okay. So set those two, just getting started may help you out. You can experiment with the others later. There are times, by the way, when you may want to take a, a fuzzy photo for some reason. Um, you, at least you'll know where to uncheck that. All right. Focus tracking with lock on A3. This is somewhat important and We'll have a lot of disagreement about this, um, but I will tell you my thoughts, right? So if you read what it says on the camera, it says, choose how long the camera waits before adjusting focus when an object come be comes between the camera and the subject. So here's what this setting does. Uh, if your camera has got lock uh, locked on focus on something, and you move the camera or the cam something comes between you and the subject, it won't automatically just focus on the, the subject that comes between you and your subject. Uh, like, uh, I don't know. You're, you're taking a picture of a bird and a truck drives in front of you. When I first looked at this setting, I thought, well, shoot, just set it to five, right? Set it to five because if I've, I mean, if I'm focused on something, I don't want to deviate from it at all. Well, I thought that was a good idea until I realized that it's a really bad idea if the camera doesn't get focus lock on what you initially intended to get focus on, right? So if the camera misses focus and it does happen and you have this set to anything other than one, the camera's going to if you're if you still are holding focus, and by the way, this setting really only matters if you're in AFC mode, right? So, if in AFS mode, it's going to stop and not continue to focus. So, if you're in AFC, this setting matters, um, and you continue to hold down your your focus, uh, and you want you're doing continuous focus. If you try and focus on anything else without releasing and restarting your focus, the camera's going to pause and not focus on anything else other than what you had for some period of time. Let's talk about what those are. Um, a setting of five is one second, right? One second. So the camera will just wait for a whole second before it refocuses. Um, four is three quarters of a second, three is half a second, two is a quarter of a second, and one is immediate. Now, one, if you're coming from the DSLR world, in general, I know there's like, if you came in from the D850 or some really advanced system, um, you're probably not even watching this anyway. But uh, this is a little, this is mostly like what DSLRs did. I came from a D3300. So try this. Try and set it to one. And in my experience, uh, I got more pictures in focus with one than with five. That's my experience. Now, you... People disagree all over the place, but at least it's at least something for you to um, to consider and think about. So, 
Um, in summary so far, A1 set to focus, A2 set to focus, A3 set to one, and um, you can try two, you can try three, the default is three. I, I just like my camera to react as quickly as possible, so I choose one. Uh, next, let's go down to um, low light AF. If you're struggling with low light, um, low light AF um, can help some. It's not super helpful, but you can turn it on. It doesn't hurt. Um, A11 built-in AF assist illuminator. I don't use it. It's obnoxious. It's blinding. I don't use it. Um, and then let's go down to D9. Now, this may be D8 or D7 or something on other cameras, but the, the setting is apply settings to live view. Remember, I told you that whatever you see in the viewfinder is what the sensor sees. Apply settings to live view, if you set it to on, then what you see is not only what the sensor sees, but it's also what your picture is going to look like, ultimately. If you set it to off, this effectively allows your camera to see in the dark. And what it's doing, and again, uh, I've not seen anyone describe this accurately on any YouTube channel. Apply settings to live view off effectively turns on an auto ISO at the highest possible setting just for focusing. That's what it's doing. It's cranking up the gain on the sensor. Just, just, it's exactly the same as if you had Ottawa's ISO turned up all the way, right? In terms of focusing, right? So apply settings to live view, really, really helpful in studio. And if you're taking a lot of, if you're in a dark place and you have ISO set to something below the max, um, this can really help you focus. It's, in fact, it's paramount to allowing you to focus your camera. So again, these, the combination of the things I'm sharing, setting A1 and A2 to focus, setting A3 to one, setting apply settings to live view off, that's gonna give you your best possible chance to get accurate focus in pretty much any condition that you might be shooting in, right? Now, the one caveat is if you're using auto ISO and you have auto ISO all the way up, which sometimes I do because I, I'm i just shooting and I want the camera to just pick the right ISO, you can set, apply the settings to live view. It, it doesn't matter if it's on or off, right? So I'll just show you this, for example. So, right, so we're gonna apply settings to live view on, you can see right now everything's really dark. Now, apply settings to live view off, right? Now, the camera, everything is brighter, right? So, but at the same time, I can turn live settings, apply settings to live view on, and you turn auto ISO on, guess what? You get this, you get the same you get the same effect, right? So um, one of two things you need to do to get pictures, to get accurate focus um, in a difficult situation. Actually, it's all these things that I'm telling you that you should try. Um, A A1 focus, A2 focus, A3 equals one, and then apply settings to live view off and or auto ISO so that you can get, um, so you can get enough light into the sensor to focus and give your camera the best possible chance of getting accurate focus. Now let's talk about the actual focus modes and what they're best used for, at least in my opinion. Mm -hmm.